In this video, we're going to take a look at the third generation Apple TV. So let's get to it. Now, over the years, there's been a lot of talk of Apple actually putting out a television set. But as of the filming of this video, that's all just speculation and rumor. Because the only Apple TV Apple has ever put out is a streaming media box. Very similar to a Roku device. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, you know that I like these little devices, and I've reviewed quite a few of them. Now, as of the filming of this video, the third generation of the Apple TV, which is what I'm running here, is the latest version of the device. And I just updated it to version 6.0 of the operating system. So basically, I'm running the latest version of the Apple TV operating system, on the latest Apple TV device. Now, I actually did an unboxing on this device, so if you want to check out what it looks like, what comes in the box, click on the link at the end of this video and you can see a couple of other videos on the Apple TV. But the device itself is very comparable to a Roku. It does have a little more weight to it. It's just basically an unassuming black box that will fit nicely in your entertainment center. And it doesn't take up a lot of space. It's actually 23 millimeters high, or 0.91 inches. It's 98 millimeters wide and deep, or 3.9 inches. And this device weighs 0.6 pounds, or 0.27 kilograms. Now, the first and second generation of the Apple TV had 256 megabytes of RAM. This device, the third generation, has double that, so it has 512 megabytes of RAM. The device does have some flash storage on it, but it's not user accessible. It's just for the device itself. And that's eight gigabytes of memory. So as you can see here, this is the interface and it's a very simple grid-like interface. Now this device is really good if you're entrenched in the Apple ecosystem. So if you have a lot of TV shows, movies, and music on iTunes, this device might be the device for you. Also, if you have Apple devices. So if you have any OS X computers, you can link them to this device. Also, if you have any iOS devices, there's a lot of integration between the Apple TV and them. So you have your grid interface down here, and I'm on movies right now. And as you can see up top, there are some of the top movies that are available on iTunes right now. So anything on these top row of icons here is drawing from iTunes. You also have the option of TV shows. As you can see, it brings up. Walking Dead, Breaking Bad, American Horror Story, Homeland. And you can actually scroll through those if you'd like. And it's a very smooth, responsive interface. It's very nice. You also have the option for music here. Same thing, you can scroll through those. Now, as I said, I updated this device to version 6.0 whatever they call the operating system on here. It is a version of iOS, but it's not called iOS. It came with iTunes Radio. So as you can see above, iTunes Radio, enjoy free streaming radio that is tailored for you from the most popular music in the iTunes store. Now the last selection, the green selection, where it says computers over there, you can actually draw from content from your computers as long as you're running iTunes on those computers. So basically, if you have iTunes on one of your computers and you have home sharing turned on, you can access all of your iTunes content on this device here. So that makes it, again, convenient for those of you who are entrenched in the iTunes ecosystem. I personally was an Apple user for about eight years, so I was very entrenched in the Apple ecosystem. But that was several years ago, and since then I've moved on mostly to Amazon.com. So in addition to those options there where you're basically accessing iTunes, you also have some apps on this device. So let's scroll down here. Let's start with Netflix. Now, Netflix is your basic Netflix. The only difference is, is the interface. Let's click on this. Now, on the Apple TV, you're going to notice that all of the interfaces are pretty much the same. Basically, you have this kind of cover flow looking presentation here and then you have on the right hand side how you want to go through the content that's on Netflix. So you have suggestions, recently watched, genres, TV shows, new releases, just for kids, my list, search, and then you have sign out if you want to sign out of your Netflix account. 
Now the remote on this device is very simple. It's an aluminum remote, very thin. Kind of easy to lose if you have a cat. I have a cat and he's uh, pushed this under the couch a couple times, so I had to definitely keep track of it. But it's a nice, compact remote. It's got a good weight to it because it is made out of aluminum and it has very few buttons. You have a menu button, you have a play pause button, you have a directional button, and you have a select button in the center. So everything is very simplistic with this remote. So we're going to go back to the main menu. I'm going to hit menu here and it brings us back. Now you also have Hulu Plus. I do not subscribe to Hulu Plus, but let's dive in here and see what it looks like here. I'm going to assume it looks pretty much the same as Netflix, but try one week free. I will try it unless they want me to enter in some sort of credit card information, which I won't do. So let's check out and see what's going on here. Okay, it wants to use my iTunes Store login. I'm not going to do this because that is tied to a credit card. Uh, I haven't bought anything off of iTunes in quite a while, so that credit card might have expired. But um, I'm going to assume that the interface is very similar to what the Netflix interface is. Now you notice there I hit the menu button once. You can back out. The menu button hitting it once will back you out. It's basically like a back button. If you hold the menu button down, it'll bring you all the way back to the main screen here. Next up is HBO Go. Now HBO Go is kind of weird. It's actually a great service. If you subscribe to HBO from your cable provider, you can most likely use HBO Go on one of these devices. The reason I call it a little bit weird is that right now I have Comcast and I can use HBO Go on the Apple TV. I cannot use HBO Go on the Roku. And that's not because the Roku is without an HBO Go app. Roku actually has an HBO Go app. But for some reason, Comcast hasn't put its stamp of approval on the Roku device. So even though I do subscribe to HBO through Comcast, I can't use the Roku device to watch HBO Go on. But I can use it on the Apple TV. So it's a little bit frustrating as far as they handle HBO Go, but that really has nothing to do with the Apple TV. HBO Go is great on this device. I actually uh, am signed in, I believe, to my account. So basically anything that's on HBO that they offer, even their back catalog, let's say you want to watch Game of Thrones Season 1, you can do that. All you have to do is scroll through here. Now, obviously the interface is not what you saw for the Netflix interface. Now, very much like a lot of the streamers out there on the market, you can either use the stock remote or you can use your iOS device to control it. Right here I happen to have an iPod Touch and there is a remote app. Now being that the remote is so simplistic, having a remote app really is not that useful until you come into an area where you actually have to type something in. So as you can see here, this is what the app looks like. You can maneuver around with this touch area up here, and it's very responsive as you can see. Now the good thing is, is that you can actually use the on-screen keyboard on your iOS device to type stuff in. So it saves you a little bit of time. And again, it's very responsive. So again, I could hit the menu button once, and it'll back me up, or I can hold the menu button down, and it'll bring me all the way back. The next thing we have here is iTunes Festival, and it's basically a way that you can watch concerts on this device. I'm not much of a concert goer, and I'm certainly not much of a concert watcher on TV. Next up, you have your settings on the device. If you want to go in, you want to do a software update, you want to check uh, your credentials on something, anything that you want to get into on the settings is there, it's available for you. Then you have a Major League Soccer app here. You have an NHL app where you can watch games, I assume. You have an MLB TV app. Let's dive into that. I'm really not a sports fan. Here we go again. Here's the, sort of that cover flow look that we saw on the Netflix app. And then you have your, your menu on the right-hand side there. So let's back out of that. Uh, we have Watch ESPN, and that's something you have to link up with your cable provider, sort of like the HBO Go app. You have to have some sort of sign-in for that. 
Next up we have trailers and again sort of that uh, that menu system they used on the HBO Go app and the, uh, the concert app. So this, as you would expect from the name of the app, is going to allow you to watch trailers. So let's back out of that. Then we have Watch Disney Channel. Let's dive into that a little bit. I'm really not a Disney Channel watcher, but uh, again, it's something you have to sign into. And I don't even think I have the Disney Channel on my on my cable package, and I really don't care. But for those of you who do care, it is available. Then you have Watch Disney XD. So you have Disney Channel, Disney XD, and then you have Disney Junior. Next up we have the Weather Channel, and that obviously is going to give you your local weather. We have Sky News. Let's click on that. And you can watch Sky News Live. Sky News Weather, interesting. And let's see, what do we have here? Quello, I really don't know what Quello is. New to Quello, sign up for a free trial. Already have Quello account. Okay, unlimited access to the world's largest library of concerts and music documentaries on your TV, computer, iPhone, and iPad for only $4.99 a month. Uh, that's not something I'd be interested in, but if you're interested in it, it's available here. Next up we have Vimeo, which is a YouTube style video sharing site. You have Vivo for your music videos. Let's see what that interface looks like. Okay, very similar interface there. You can watch your favorite music videos. All right, up next we have YouTube. Now, I already signed into my YouTube account here. This allows you to do pretty much anything you'd expect. You could watch YouTube videos on here. You could search for YouTube videos. In fact, why don't we search for one of mine here? Again, instead of using the on-screen keyboard, I'm going to use the keyboard on my iPod Touch. And... look up Tech Harvest and let's just go down to my welcome video here. I'm going to play it on this TV here and you can see the quality of YouTube through the Apple TV. <laughs> So there we go, nice and snappy, no lag. It's actually a really nice YouTube experience. So let's go back to the main menu here, and you have the Smithsonian Channel, um, something I'm probably not going to be watching, but uh, again, if you're interested, you have some options here. All right, you have Crunchyroll. I believe that's anime. Again, something I'm not really interested in, but it is available to those of you who are interested. And let's see what the interface looks like on this. Okay, uh, sign up or log in. I won't be doing that, but you can see here what it looks like. And one thing that's nice, if you notice, when you scroll to the extreme right, you notice how the next selection kind of folds in. It's kind of a nice touch there. All right, uh, podcasts. Now, let's click on this, and let's see what we've got here. So it offers the basically what you would expect podcasts that are available. Now up here you have my podcasts and my stations. You would have to sign into your iTunes account to access that, and then anything that you subscribe to you could access from here. But you also have genres here and providers, and then you could do a search as well. Let's back out of this, and then you have radio. And these are what you would have in iTunes, those basic radio stations that have been there for years and years and years. Uh, you have the availability to listen to them here. Not to be confused with the iTunes radio uh, that's new to this device that's up here. And from what I understand, the iTunes radio is more like a Pandora kind of thing. 
All right, we have four more apps. We have NBA. Again, not a sports fan, but it is available here. iCloud Photos. Now, I don't do iCloud, but again, if you're deep in the Apple ecosystem, you probably do use iCloud, so you can pull down your content to this device, and let's see what we've got here for photos. Again, you have to sign in. I don't use iCloud, so I can't show you that, but it is available. Last two things we have here are Flickr. Again, I don't have a Flickr account. I'm really not big into pictures. Um, that's probably why I don't put my face on this channel. But uh, these options, again, are available if you're interested. Last selection here is Wall Street Journal Live. And there we go. So that's pretty much what the Apple TV offers. Now, one of the cool things you can do with an Apple TV is use AirPlay. And if you're not familiar, AirPlay is a technology, a wireless technology, where you can basically beam content from one device to the Apple TV. And that one device is generally an iOS device. Even though I do believe you can actually use AirPlay from an OS X device as well. But it's been a long time since I've had an Apple computer, as I said, so I can't test that out now, but I can show you AirPlay from an iOS device, my iPod Touch here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into YouTube. Now, obviously, as I showed you, the Apple TV has its own YouTube app, but YouTube is going to make it easier because I can actually show you my content. Again, don't want to get into problems with uh, copyright infringement. So I'm going to beam a YouTube video from the iPod Touch to the Apple TV, and you can see how it works. So I have my channel here, and I'm actually going to choose the Roku 2 versus the Google TV because it's sort of in the same space as the Apple TV here. So I'm going to include that in this video. So I have one of my videos here, and I actually skipped the commercial before it, and I muted the device, so it's not going to be conflicting with what I'm saying here. But if you can see here on the device, there's this little icon right there. It's sort of a a rectangle with a triangle. So basically it means that you're going to shoot this content over here from the small screen onto the larger screen using the Apple TV device. So I'm going to press the AirPlay button and as you can see here it's the iPod Touch is selected here which it's obviously playing on there right now but I can play it on the Apple TV. So I'm going to hit that and the view changes here on the iPod Touch and you should see on the big screen the video. So you can control everything from the iPod Touch. I'm going to press play. And there we go. Now while this is doing this, I can actually go and use the iPod Touch for other things. Okay, in this video we're going to pit the Roku 2 XS head to head. So I can hit pause on this if I want to control it. I can also scrub through the video here and uh, it will control the video up there. So it's a cool little feature on AirPlay. Not every app is compatible with AirPlay. In fact, in the description down below, I'll give you a link from the Apple site what they recommend for AirPlay compatible apps. One of the apps that they do say is compatible is Angry Birds. Strangely enough, I haven't been able to get it to work. Now, it might be because my iPod Touch is not running iOS 7. This device cannot run iOS 7. It's not one of the later versions. Um, and the Apple TV is, again, on its most latest version, which is uh, version 6.0. But I'm just going to show you here. I'm going to bring up Angry Birds on the iPod Touch, and I'm going to try and use the AirPlay function to mirror what's going on on the iPod Touch on the big screen. And I'm going to show you that it really doesn't work all the time with all the apps, um, which is sort of a letdown, but it is cool when it does work, as I just showed you there. So, as you see, I'm on Angry Birds now, and you can hear, let me mute the TV real quickly, just so I can explain what's going on here. So, I have Angry Birds going on here, and if I want to use AirPlay on this, what I do is I double tap the home button, and it brings up my apps that I'm using. And then you have your AirPlay button here. And you can hit it, and again, you can have the iPod Touch selected or the Apple TV. I have the Apple TV selected, and 
Let's go back to the game here. And I will unmute the TV. And as you can see, let me bring down the sound at least a little bit. As you can see, it's just the audio that's coming through, not the video, which is sort of a letdown. So it would be nice if you could actually use AirPlay on your iOS device and beam all the content, whatever it may be, over to the Apple TV. So you could actually then use the Apple TV as sort of a large screen gaming console using your iOS device as the controller. Now you can do that with some apps, but not all of them, at least in my experience. So this user interface is very basic and very user friendly and it does offer a very little bit of customization. So if you don't like where one of these apps is placed, all you have to do is long press on your OK button here. And as you can see, which is typical of iOS devices, the app is shaking back and forth. And then you can move it to wherever you want the app. And then when you want to place it down, you press the OK button again, and it's placed down where you want it. The only thing you cannot do is change the location of these top five apps up here. So that's the Apple TV. My personal conclusion is that it is one of the best streamers on the market today. Now the problem with a lot of the streamers on the market today is there's not one streamer out there that will offer you everything. Apple TV offers you some things. It offers you, as we've gone through here, a lot of different options mostly iTunes related, but you do get Netflix on it, Hulu Plus, and HBO Go. It is lacking some of the other services like Vudu, or more importantly, Amazon Video On Demand. Now the Roku has Amazon Video On Demand. It has Vudu, but the Roku lacks YouTube. Now a Google TV has pretty much everything that's available out there, except recently HBO Go will no longer work on a Google TV. So as it stands right now, there's no one box to rule them all. So your best bet is to find out what each device offers you and see if you can live within those parameters. So in closing, the Apple TV is a very solid device. It's a very straightforward device. And if you're entrenched in the Apple ecosystem, if you have a lot of iOS devices, if you use iTunes, then it's a perfect fit for you. To me, the thing I like about it the most is the HBO Go integration. I'm not a big fan of the Netflix user interface. I like the standard Netflix user interface that's on pretty much every device out there. If you're price conscious, the Apple TV is $99, which is pretty much the sweet spot for these devices. I would not spend much more than $100 for one of these streaming media players. Right now, you can get a Roku for $49.99, so you could actually buy two Roku LTs for the price of one of these Apple TVs. And that's why I recommend the Roku as one of the best devices out there, but again, you cannot go wrong with an Apple TV. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And as always, if you wanna help out this channel, give me a thumbs up or favorite this video. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.